welcome back to another episode of Crazy Tech Reviews. And in today's episode, we're going to be um, doing a quick restoration here. Now, this is going to be a multiple part series on this channel over several weeks or months, I guess. I don't know however long it takes me to fix this thing. But um, uh, in today's episode, we're going to be starting my restoration series on the Macintosh Plus here. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen this machine at least a few times. As a matter of fact, I featured it in my, my last episode on the channel um, on the Compact Max. But anyway, there are two main problems with this thing, and the first one is that the um, uh, there's something wrong with either a connection in the machine, which I'm hoping is what it is. And if it's not that, then there's something wrong with the analog board in this machine, because the CRT does not stay on, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But um, the second problem is that the floppy drive is broken. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with it, but I've taken looks at, or look, a look at it several times, um... And I just can't get it to work, so I'm going to have to put a new floppy drive in this machine. Um, which I do not have at the moment, so that will be for a later part. But, um, anyway, um, the only other option with the floppy drive is just to buy an external one, which is what I'm probably going to do anyway. It would probably make the system look a bit cooler anyway, but I would still like to get the original drive working. And I also need a mouse for the system, so I'll be getting that in a later video probably too. Uh, so anyway, with that said, I, I'm going to go ahead and show you what's wrong with this machine. Now the problem with this machine is that when you turn it on, nothing actually shows up on the screen. However, when you uh, slap the side of it, like I'll do in a minute here, um, sometimes you'll actually get something to come up on the screen, like right there, uh, but the image doesn't stay. So I'm guessing there's something wrong with the analog board. And sometimes, even when you turn it on the side, it works better. Um, so... Uh, this is one of many problems with the machine besides the floppy drive, but anyway, I guess I'll go ahead and clear out my workspace real quick by moving my Apple II out of the way, and, um, yeah, so we can work on the Mac. Well, I guess we don't have to do anything. Uh, I just turned around, and it's magically working just fine. I mean, I'm still obviously going to take a look at it, because I'm sure if I tap it, I don't want to right now, because I want to preserve, uh... The beauty of this thing working, but if I, I'm sure if I tap that though, it would stop working again. So I've got to figure out what's going on there. But it's working just fine uh, right now. But I'm sure it won't in a bit. Let's see the nice. Now this is a good chance to show you the other problem this machine has. I don't really want to though. Actually, I'll do that when the machine's open, uh, when I have direct access to the disk drive, because I don't want to get a disk permanently lodged in that thing and not be able to get back out. Um, another thing is, too, I'm going to brush this out with a toothbrush, not the one I use, obviously, um, as a real toothbrush, but that's, that's, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but there's a lot of built-up gunk in here, um, which I want to get out of there because it just makes it look aesthetically better, but anyway, it's working right now, so I'll get back to the clip I was filming. Well, that screwed up. I mean, obviously, I still have to work on the machine, so I guess I'll continue to remove my Apple II. Also, and, I'm not sure um, if you can hear this, but it's making a really yeah. faint ticking sound. Now, I heard that this is actually the disk drive, but here, I'll see if you can hear it. Again, it's very faint. So, yeah, it's kind of weird, but I heard it's the disk drive, so not too worried. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely interesting. Just give you one last glorious look at this uh, floppy disk icon. Go back to it. And then that's when I realized I did something pretty stupid. Well, it turns out I lost my last two brain cells that I already had, because it turns out I literally turned this machine on right before I was planning on working on it, which means that now the CRT is charged, so now I'm going to have to wait like an hour or two for it to dischar discharge, so... I guess we'll work on cleaning it up a bit till then. Again, brain cells at work, guys. So while I'm waiting, I guess I'll move the Mac over to the workbench and start cleaning it. Now, right now, I'm using a toothbrush to clean out the vents like I said I'd do earlier in the video. And I'm mainly using the toothbrush instead of a paper towel because I can get deeper into those vents and sort of uh, scrape the dust out. Although, neither work well. And, um... I had to like pass over it like three times to get most of the dust out and there's even still some dust in there but um definitely better than it was before um and then i proceeded to uh brush out some other vents and some and wipe down some other areas of the machine with some isopropyl alcohol and um yeah 
Um, I use this stuff mainly because it gets rid of uh, scuffs really well, but when I'm cleaning up other marks, I'll typically use baking soda. And uh, that's what I'm going to do here. So for baking soda, I typically just put like a small amount on the machine and then I pour some rubbing alcohol on it. You can use water as well, but I figure if you can use both rubbing alcohol and water, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Now, this stuff does leave a nasty... Um, mess in the machine uh so you're gonna have to like wash it off or somehow wipe it off with water afterwards right there at the toothbrush i was just mixing all it all of it together and now i'm just gonna smear it across the machine and hope that it gets actual gunk off of the uh, case but you'll notice that it does leave a little bit of uh, marks across the machine which is kind of not the best but it works and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this uh, paper towel with water on it, and I'm just going to wipe over the entire computer to remove as much of the baking soda as I can. I did have to do a few passes over this area because there was a lot on there. Um, typically, if it was easy to get into this machine and the tube wasn't charged up, I would just um, uh, take the panels off or the plastic off the machine, and I would just wash it out in the driveway or in the backyard. Uh, that's typically with the best way to clean it off, either in a sink or with a hose. Alright, so now it is time to do what I was secret secretly dreading with this project, and that is to try to find a screwdriver, a Torx 15 screwdriver, that I can actually get these top screws out. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Macintosh, uh, all the classic Macs, even my 1991 Mac, class Mac Classic, which is about... I mean, this machine was released in 1986, so it's about five years newer than that. They all have Torx uh, 15 screws that are all the way up in the handle, so it's basically impossible to fit a normal driver. Now, you can just buy a really long driver, but I don't have one of those, so I have to use attachments on one of my screwdriver kits, if not to my other screwdriver kit. But, but either way, I still have a hard time getting it into there so hopefully I get lucky this time but I'm not gonna, probably going to be able to this is some of this until tomorrow unless I want to actually just charge some real electricity from that tube but anyway with that said I guess we'll start doing this now uh, so prepare for a total of fun now what I'm going to do is uh, clear off my workspace again so I can put a uh, towel down though this is to protect the front of the system because I'm going to lay the system on its face and um, I always use a towel so that the system doesn't get scuffed up after I clean all the scuffs up. Um, and yeah, it's just an extra protection measure or measure of protection you can do just to make sure that you don't damage your system. Right, so I've succeeded and this is what I had to use to actually be able to get into the machine. So first of all, we just have a standard screwdriver thing nothing special about that then after that I have an extension thing it's just a standard screwdriver extension here um, it measures about two and um, three-eighths inches if that matters I guess but it's just a standard little extender and then after that if I didn't lose it I have this massive as hell freaking Torx bit which goes into this and then goes into this and the last time I did it I had two of these but my brother's work box is out in the shop so he doesn't have his with him but holy crap Apple come on I mean you've gone from a simple snap on the Apple II to get the top off to this I can get into my iPhones easier than this so yeah uh, it's funny, because you'd think the iPhones would be harder to get into, but if you have the right tools, they're easier, and I guess same here, but, um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to get into this yet, because I might actually have to discharge the tube, but it has been about an hour or 45 minutes, so it should almost be completely discharged by now, so, let's hope that's the case, I am going to be discharging it or uh, at least making sure it's discharged. So this might actually be the first time there's an actual electricity flowing through that. So um, let's hope I don't kill myself and um, 
yeah, we'll go ahead and just start to open this thing up. And then after finding an appropriate tool to get into the system and uh, laying the system on its front, I proceeded to remove the four screws, or for me three because I managed to lose one at one point, uh, screws on the back. Um, now, I'm going to warn you, uh, there is one underneath the um, uh, battery cover, which is what I'm probably going to use to replace the fourth one that I lost, but um, yeah, um, so be careful for that unless you want to rip your battery compartment out. So I wasn't able to find an alligator cable or cable to properly discharge this right now, or an alligator clip cable. So for now, I'm just going to stay away from anything high voltage and just try not to kill myself. Because I'm guessing that the bleeder resistor hasn't discharged this tube yet. But I could be wrong. So with that said, we'll I'll use my um, freaking one foot long screwdriver to get in here to, oh, uh, to uh, take care of this thing, I guess. Sometimes you kind of have to lightly pry. You don't want to pry too much because you don't want to uh, hurt the plastic or anything. But sometimes it takes a while to kind of break the seal on this machine. You can also just lift it up and do the same thing, but there's a chance that it could go up too far and then when you shake it, it could the entire system could fall out because there's nothing really attached to this back plate. screwdriver, I think. Okay. Yep. This is unusual. Usually it doesn't take this much work to get the system apart. Oh, there it goes. Again, I'm just barely prying anything on this because the last thing you need is to ding up the plastic case because you pried it with a metal screwdriver. It would probably even be better to use a plastic tool if I had one that would work in this situation. But all I have right now is a screwdriver, and as you can see, it's still getting two uh, case pieces. Are starting to separate and then the after um, unscrewing the screws and uh... Yeah, I removed the case. One of the neat things about the system is that it actually has all the signatures of the original Macintosh team. And as you can see, um, these were on the uh, mold that they uh, that they used. And as you can see right there in the middle, Steve Jobs. And I thought Steve Wozniak's was on here too. I think it's this one right here but I could be wrong anyway so that's the uh, that's that and by that I meant system so first of all we have uh, I'll talk about the logic board in a second but first of all we have our analog board and all of our high voltage components I'm gonna stay away from those for now until tomorrow but um, anyway obviously this is a CRT right here uh, this is the anode so this is the part that is uh, charged to the flyback transformer, which is basically what powers everything. And then these are the data connectors that are going into the actual cathode ray gun in the back of the tube. This is what aligns and controls the actual wave. Um, these magnets and electromagnetic magnets here. Uh, right here we have our floppy drive. Um, this is just standard uh, five or is it I forget 800k floppy drive I think um, and then the power supply and the analog board are on the same board so all your high voltage flyback transformer CRT controlling equipment capacitors and your actual power PSU uh, board are the same board and then over here we'll have the logic board which I'll pull out of the system in a minute now if this were a newer Mac, Mac there'd be a quantum hard drive of some kind sitting right here 
behind the floppy drive, but this Mac doesn't have that because it's too old. And then we have our ground down here, but there's nothing really special about that. That just keeps the system from exploding. And I'm pretty sure there's also a speaker in there somewhere. So, yeah. The one thing I do like about this computer is after you get the initial screws out, and if you have the right tools, which aren't terribly uncommon like they are with some of Apple's newer products, I mean, there's no security screws. It's all just standard screws, so... Either they didn't do as good a job as they could have at preventing people from getting to getting into the system, which is good for me, obviously. Um, and this uh, this is uh, actually pretty cool because like they made the logic board very accessible. All you have to do is simply take off the uh, protection shield that keeps anything from shorting out. As you can see, there's some concerningly dark burn looking spots on there that could just be age though but that looks like something actually burnt there it could also be rust from uh the metal bracket which is probably what it is because if you notice the metal here and here and all over the system is corroding pretty bad actually so that's probably what that is i'm hoping and even some of the connectors too so this must have been uh used or stored in a really humid environment anyway all you have to do after that then is unplug the necessary connectors and that's it. Another, you'll see another surprising thing with the system in a minute. Once I get it out of here. Or with the logic board once I get it out. So here's the logic board. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way so that we can take a closer look at the logic board in a second. Alright, so it's now time to clean the motherboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all the removable RAM cards. And then um, I just used some of the same techniques I used on the actual computer itself, and that was uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, a toothbrush to kind of loosen or remove, if possible, some of the dust in there um, on the both the RAM, which I'm doing right now, and then later on the motherboard. And uh, there was some weird stuff that was on the board that would not come off with that, so I ended up having to wet it down with like rubbing alcohol or something and then come back with another paper towel and scrape it off kind of. But, yeah, that was kind of annoying. Alright, so unfortunately I've been unable to locate any uh, reference image or diagram uh, on the chips of this. Um, uh, so, uh, I can't exactly tell you or give you, like, what, or tell you, like, what all these chips do at the moment, but I'm going to continue looking because I'm planning on doing more videos on this machine and uh, this, um, these models of Compact Max once I get this one and my other one working. Uh, eventually, but, um, I can tell you that this here is the Motorola 68,000, or 6800, no, 68,000 CPU, and the, the, the RAM goes here, and it, um, I'm pretty sure these two chips here are the system ROMs, but other than that, I can't tell you much, because I'm not familiar with it, and I'm pretty sure this is also the, uh, IO interface chip here, um, but, um, I'm referencing all that off of the later version of the Mac because I can't find um, a diagram for the chips on this version. So I'm going to continue looking for that, um, but I can't necessarily tell you what's on this board right now. So uh, with that said, let's get back to uh, the restoration. So with that, I began to uh, put the RAM back into the motherboard, and um, with the RAM back in, um, I went ahead and moved that off to the side and uh, brought the machine over because now I'm going to have to uh, discharge the CRT, which is very, um, it's a very simple process, but also a very dangerous one. Uh, what I'm doing right now here is I'm unscrewing the uh, screw that the ground connector is connected to, uh, uh, so I can insert um, a wire there, and then what I'm going to do is connect that to my screwdriver, and I'm basically, what I'm trying to do is short out the uh, connection between the anode and the um, ground, and then just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and check it one more time with the screwdriver. With that done, I can go ahead and remove some connections from the board and then um, disconnect uh, the ground connector, which is connected to the analog board, and then pull the analog board out of the system. And disconnect the one last wire that's used to control the magnets on the tube. And with that done, I'll move the computer itself back out of the way and um, set the logic board down back on my bench. All right, so I... Apparently wasn't recording it, but I uh, removed the logic board from the machine. Again, 
um, safely. I recommend you guys don't do anything like this unless you know exactly what you're doing like I do because um, uh, getting shocked by a CRT is definitely not a good way to leave this world. Um, I don't personally know, obviously, but I'm pretty sure uh, you don't want to die by getting shocked by a CRT because, yeah, it's not probably the best idea. Um, anyway, though, I do have the logic board out now, or the logic board, the, uh, analog board. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the cycle string. Now, um, first of all, down here at the bottom, we have the brightness control. This is just a simple pot with, um, a little knob on it here for controlling the brightness. Uh, nothing too special. Uh, uh, but yeah, this is how you control the brightness of the, mach the, of the machine. Uh, down here you have the speaker. Uh, which is just a small little speaker that they use, I guess, for beeping or for the system boot up sound and stuff. Uh, over um, in this area, we have just the standard PSU for the system. Uh, they decided to put it on the same board uh, as the uh, uh, power, uh, as the CRT uh, circuit, uh, high voltage circuit. Again, uh, be careful around these capacitors. Um, I'm not touching any of that so that I don't die. Um, obviously here we have our uh, standard power socket and our uh, switch. Here is supposed to be a battery socket, but uh, my stupidity, um, when I was first disassembling this machine, I forgot to take out that extra screw that's in here that isn't on my, my other Macintosh, so I, di I didn't expect that to be there, but I took this out and uh, I pulled the battery compartment out with it, so that's, I mean, it's not really something that you need anymore unless you want accurate time and stuff like that, but the machine will still work without it, thank God. Uh, right over here, we have our CRT stuff, and I'm sure it, it's all probably uh, in, intermingled, but this is the uh, actual cable here that hooks up to the back of the CRT uh, ray gun, and this is what actually controls the uh, CRT rays. Uh, this cable, or no, no, the cable that's supposed to plug in right here is what controls the magnets on the CRT. Uh, right here, this is uh, the, the data cable that goes to the computer to um, output, I'm guessing, the image onto the CRT. I'm not, I'm not too experienced with the CRT stuff, other than how to safely work with them. Uh, and obviously, right here, we have the flyback transformer, which is very dangerous. So do not go near this thing until you've discharged it, if you are even comfortable discharging it, because these are very uh, high voltage. Uh, they're what power the CRT, and uh, this is what connects to the CRT right here. Um, so stay away from these if you can, and then obviously we have the ground that I was using to discharge. So essentially what I was doing was I was shorting these two connections. So just to double check, you can always just rush that there. And as you can see, we don't get any um, fancy, uh, scary um, explosions or anything like that, so we know it's discharged. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all that's on this board other than various capacitors and voltage-related stuff. Definitely a lot simpler in some ways than the logic board, but more complicated than others. So now what we're going to try to do is start looking for um, shorts or not shorts, but um, uh, broken uh, broken um, traces, which is what I think because it happens to be that the side I bang on when I bang the machine to get it to work is this side right here. So when I'm banging, I'm technically banging this board. So I'm guessing that somehow dislodges a broken trace or something, and then it obviously breaks. It obviously disconnects again once the machine bends back to the normal position, I guess. And then we also have various pots on here for brightness and contrast and stuff like that, which are right here. So um, with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this... Uh, protection layer again make sure you're I don't even know why you would go this far before discharging your tube I typically discharge it first thing when I open up the case but um, yeah be very careful here um, and there's the speaker so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and I'm going to now go ahead and remove the safety shield on the uh, motherboard now this is easy there's just some little simple plastic clip things that look like this um, they basically just clip the little protector in place and I'm just gonna pull them all out of the system um, and hopefully the board should come out. To be honest, they are quite a bit of a pain, requiring a little bit of work to push them out of the actual board themselves, but eventually I got them all out, and, um, the, uh, plastic protector came right off. 
um, as seen right here. All right, so I now have the um, oh, the uh, plastic back protection uh, piece off of the system. And uh, basically, this is just to keep anything from shorting out or anybody from accidentally sticking their hands into the back of the flyback transformer and turning themselves into a human chicken nugget, I guess you could say, or in other words, cooked chicken. Basically, them cooking themselves in the back of the computer. Yeah, that's basically what this does. And I can see here that um, it appears that something has poked either into or through this plastic, which is not good. And you can see here on the other side the the bulge it's made on that. I'm guessing that was some kind of uh, contact. Anyway, uh, we have the uh, board now exposed, so I'm trying to be as careful with this thing as possible. But, I mean, I can see why some trace would break on this, because if you look, Apple was... Uh, intelligent enough to put all the really heavy stuff, like the flyback transformer on the top, so this is all weighing down and to where the board would break or bend and cause traces to break. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to try to lay this down as much as we can on its back, which I might need to remove some of these cables. All right, everybody. So I brought um, I brought this uh, board out to my other workbench where I have the soldering iron and everything. And it turns out there are a lot of uh, not broken traces, but in fact broken um, contacts. So I was looking at this one right here, and you'll notice that um, the entire contact, if it will focus, is actually broken off the pin here. Now, this is, these are easy to fix. I already fixed two, both here and right here. All you have to do is simply grab your soldering iron and simply um, reflow the joint here. I'm going to clean it off first. All you have to do is simply, um, well, first I lost. Uh, you're just going to take your soldering iron and simply heat up the connector or the pin and just wait for it to all heat up. Yeah, this one's bad. For this one, I might even have to reflow or put new solder on. And right here, if you're wondering what this is, this is uh, what I took out so I could test the test it to make sure it was good. I'm gonna quickly um, make sure this one is 100% reflow as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that or fix that one, and then I'll uh, film some more. So I moved the camera a bit so you could so you could see better what I'm doing. Um, basically, I'm just reflowing this trace and putting some more solder on it so that it, it uh, it's, it's more secure. And uh, I'm hoping this will work, but yeah, that's pretty right, much it. so I um, just finished uh, resoldering it. It's definitely not a very good uh, solder job, but it's the best I can get as there's something else was going on with that thing. And so now I'm going to continue looking for more broken uh, contacts and resoldering this. All right, so now that all the connections are fixed in the analog board, I'll go ahead and insert it back into the computer, followed by the uh, logic board. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the CRT anode as well as other cables, such as the uh, data cable for the CRT, and the uh, ground, of course, and the uh, ray gun, the cable that controls the actual uh, ray guns on the CRT. And then finally, I'll insert the paper protector on the uh, logic board. All right, so I've got this just in case. Um Stuff goes wrong, and um, I'm hoping this thing turns on. I swear to God, um, it better, because I'm pretty sure I fixed all the noticeable broken traces, but um, there's, there's, is there any kind of lock in the thing? Okay, I don't think there's, all right. It works! All right, guys, so it appears that I fixed the Macintosh. Um, it's not turning off anymore. It is a little bit finicky, but I'm guessing there's one more trace, but hey, I fixed it. Um, brightness works. <laughs> oh my God. I was not expecting it to be that easy, guys. Um, 
I fixed the Macintosh. Look at that. Um, if you remember back in the beginning of the video, it didn't work like that as well. All right, so uh, that is it for the Macintosh video. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together and um, I guess um, in the next part, we're gonna work on the floppy drive and getting that working. I guess I won't be needing this yet. Um, so uh, I'm very impressed. I was not expecting it to work first try. So anyway, uh, I really uh, thank you guys for watching and um, with that said, well, see you in part two, I guess. Bye.